Well, search crews have now recovered the flight data and cockpit voice recorders from AirAsia Flight 8501. What critical information could these devices give investigators about what caused the plane to crash? Al Jazeera transportation contributor Todd Card uh, Curtis, excuse me, joins us live next. Prosecutors and search teams in Indonesia have found the fuselage of Air Asia Flight 8501. It was spotted about two miles from where the tail was located in the Java Sea. No word yet how long it will take to recover the entire plane. The cockpit vo voice recorder was also found and recovered today. Authorities now have both black boxes in their hands. So let's go to Al Jazeera transportation contributor Todd C Curtis joining us from Newton, Massachusetts this morning. Mr. Curtis, good morning to you. So they have these two black boxes. Will they tell us everything we need to know about what caused this crash? They'll tell us a substantial amount of information about the crash, but certainly not everything. Uh, the black boxes, of course, record what was going on inside the plane, primarily the cockpit conversations and other conversations, as well as parameters from the flight itself. But what led to this event may have taken place minutes or even hours or longer before the plane took off. So the investigation will be far more thorough than just going through the black boxes. And they did uh, identify the, the location of the fuselage as well. How important is that to completing this puzzle? Well, that's going to be important for, for several reasons. Uh, first, if the early reports from the searchers are correct, if the fuselage is quite a bit of a distance away from the tail, that speaks to the aircraft somehow or another uh, becoming um, coming apart in the air rather than crashing on the water and coming apart there. And if there was some sort of in-flight breakup, this could speak to all sorts of other things that led to the crash. How soon would you expect uh, that these two data, the data recorder and the voice recorder, how soon would you expect that we'll start to see preliminary investigation results from the analysis? Preliminary results could come within days because reading out of the data has already started for the flight data recorder and will soon start for the uh, cockpit voice recorder. It may take longer to interpret that information since it's very likely that the manufacturer as well as the airline would have to be involved with looking at the data, not just the investigative authorities. So we're looking at a picture right now uh, of the black uh, box, or we were just looking at a picture of it. There it is. They're actually, of course, orange uh, boxes. Uh, they, they appear to be completely intact. Uh, these are believed to be very sort of solid, um, you know, pieces. Uh, the integrity of the data, are we, are we assuming that that's all intact? Given the condition, the apparent condition of the boxes, I suspect that the data will be intact. Uh, they're fairly resilient, and from the evidence from recent crashes, for example, a similar crash in 2009 with an A330 uh, aircraft in the Atlantic, uh, aircraft that have an impact with the ocean, uh, the black boxes have been shown to uh, uh, keep the data fairly intact, and I have uh, no suspicion that there's going to be a problem with these two. And yet some have said these are antiquated, right? Why don't these black boxes have the ability to send real-time data to ground control rather than every time there's a plane crash, divers having to swim to the bottom of the ocean to get them? Well, certainly the technology exists to transmit data in real time from the aircraft to the ground. What doesn't exist, though, is a worldwide agreement amongst the manufacturers, the airlines, and the regulators as to what form a new kind of data transmission would take. And given the past uh, innovations in aviation, although it's very, very possible right now to do it, it would take years of negotiation to make sure it's done in a way that's going to be uh, consistent and reliable. And so we wait. Al Jazeera contributor Todd Curtis joining us from Massachusetts this morning. Todd, thank you.